Hello, I'm here today to tell you the steps that I went through to find peace with God. As a child, I was raised in a Christian family. I went to Sunday school and I read my Bible and I prayed before meals. And I knew from Sunday school that God loved me. They told me and I loved him back. And I thought that was just enough going to church uh, with my family. But then when I was seven or eight years old, I went to a neighborhood child evangelism meeting. And I just loved it. They had flannel graph stories and singing and uh, everything. But then afterwards, one of the teachers asked me, Lorraine, have you ever asked Jesus into your heart to be your Savior? And I thought about it and I thought, well, no, I never had. I just thought I was a Christian. And so she explained that everyone has to make a decision to whether accept Jesus dying on the cross for their sins or to reject it. And would I like to accept the fact that he died for my sins and wants to be my Savior? And I said, well, yes, I do. I thought he already was. <laughs> and so I knelt with her and prayed and asked God into my heart. And I remember the joy that filled my heart at that day. And uh, just as a seven or eight-year-old, I remember skipping all the way home from child evangelism meeting. And I was so happy that I had made things right with God and he had given me joy. Then I did what a lot of people do. We just... You start trying to live the Christian life. You want to please God. You want to do everything right. So it's like a checklist. You would, What do you have to do to be a good Christian? Well, you have to read your Bible, and then you have to pray. Go to church and be nice to others. Don't be ugly to people. You know, obey your mother and father. These are what make a, a Christian. And so I went for years and years thinking that that's what people do. Uh, to be a Christian, but you know what? Um, it's having the form of godliness, but you lack the power thereof. You uh, you just really don't um, have the certainty that God is with you every moment, and uh, we'll talk more about that. So, in college, I went to a Bible college, and I was hoping to be a Bible translator in the future. And so one of my Bible teachers told, introduced me to the f idea of practicing the presence of God. And he had told us about Brother Andrew writing a booklet about that. And so he said, do you believe that God is really with you every minute and every day? That he's never gone from you if you're... In a cave, he's with you. If you're in outer space, wherever you are, God is with you. And Yes, really? I said, well, yes, I do. He said, well, this week I'm going to challenge you to never be out of the presence of God. And I thought, oh, well, that's easy. <laughs> but that week I found it was very hard. I was used to going to church and doing religious things. And then I would go off and do whatever I wanted to do, do my own thing. I'm from California, remember? And so I was amazed to find out there were times when I didn't want God with me. I, I like to do things that I really would rather he wasn't around. <laughs> and so as the week went on, I, uh, it was a new experience to realize truly that God was with me at every moment. And that week changed my life more than any other. And, uh, you know, in the Garden of Eden, God came and walked and fellowshiped with Adam and Eve every single day. And it would amaze me to think that he also wanted to do that with me. The great God in heaven wanted to come and fellowship and talk with me. So... Uh, that was a wonderful thing to know, and that's the way I started living my life the rest of my life, walking each day with him. Then one day there was a family crisis, well, a lot of days actually, but when I prayed to God, he answered my prayer within five minutes for this other person every time. 
Wow. It was so astounding to think that God was actually hearing me and that he actually um, was answering my prayer within five minutes. I can't tell you what that did to my faith. There's no way I could say God wasn't real. It was a figment of my imagination because he was acting in my life. Uh, so now each day I start off by praying to God and asking him into my life to ask him to help me glorify his name that day and uh, help me to walk with him. Then I pray for others. And then um, uh, <sighs> sorry about that senior moment. Each morning I start off and I listen to J. Vernon McGee on the internet at ttb.org through the bible.org each morning and he teaches the whole bible through in a, in 5 years and it's really really helped me in studying the bible i've realized that god never wants us to try to do it on our own i mean i tell sunday school stories to the children and in each one he tells them i am there i'm going to be strong for you I will do it. You don't have to. Just be still and let me work for you. And you know, it's a wonderful thing to know that your Christian walk with God isn't in your own strength. That He is there doing it through you. Uh, being close to you. And now God is trying to teach me not to fear. And there's so many things to be fearful in life of what your children do in their life, uh, the world situations, and uh, he has wonderful verses in the Bible that say, fear not, fear not, you know. And it says, for God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of sound mind. And it says he's a very present help in time of need. And even if the whole earth is removed, dissolves, and the mountains fall into the sea, I shouldn't fear because he has me in the palm of his hand. And so, to, do, to not fear, you have to trust in the nature of God, in his faithfulness, in his love, in his um, care for you, and that he cares for you. And so that's what he's teaching me now. And I'd like to challenge you... Uh, to believe this verse uh, that, and promise that God gave you. He says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. And that's what life is all about, a relationship with God and uh, he with us and us with him, walking each day. And then it'll be for all eternity. Thank you.